What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. Uh, we're doing all kinds of man shit here on the channel, um, so please subscribe if you're interested. Uh, at the end of this video, hopefully you'll learn something. Um, today we're going to talk about how to uh, how to basically disable the pressure switch on any mower seat. So I'm going to show you how I did it on my zero turn, and uh, the switch can be one of two ways. So when we open up the mower, I'll show you exactly how to troubleshoot which kind of switch you have, if it's a ground switch or if it's a complete, uh, if the switch is completing a circuit. And then I'll show you how to bypass that so you never have to worry about the blades shutting off because you're getting up out of the seat. Now there's always a safety concern of, you know, hey, the blades are still running, but you're off the mower. Okay, um, exercise this with caution. Um, don't use it with kids, all that uh, dumb BS, all that disclaimer. I'm by no means, um, um, saying that you should do this. I'm just saying it's convenient for me and this is why I've done it. Um, so I'm going to teach you exactly how to do it today. Um, there's a couple videos out there, but I haven't seen anything on a uh, zero turn mower and how to do it on that. So uh, we're going to bring it in real close. I'll show you exactly how the switch works and then uh, and then I'll show you how I jump it. So you can use a more permanent solution or you can use a temporary solution like I have so that you can revert it back to um, what it what it is like from the factory. So if you have to take it into the dealer, um, they they know that you haven't messed with it. The pressure switch is pretty much the same with any riding lawnmower, zero turn, a small tractor. Pretty much anything that has a pressure uh, pressure uh, switch in the seat, they're all the same. Um, they could be wired one of two ways. So we'll go over that here. Um, let's pull it in close, make a quick down and dirty video on it, and uh, call it a day. The, Basically, the little switch is underneath the seat here. Um, they're all pretty much the same, have the same kind of concept. They have two wires going to them. Um, the two kinds that are going to be is one that completes a circuit. So when I actually sit on this, it's completing the circuit in between these two wires. And then it tells the control module that we're good to go um, to keep the engine running, to keep the blades running. So that's how mine works. If you have one that is grounded out, then what will happen is when you sit on it, uh, it will basically open up that circuit. When you just come off of the seat, it will close that circuit to ground and kill the engine. So the way to figure this out is you take your, take your terminals off here, literally just pull them off the seat switch. Now, if it still operates the same like this, disconnected, then you have what's called a completing, I would call a completing the circuit um, type switch. So if it does work after you've disconnected it, that's all you got to do. Literally wrap these two ends in electrical tape and zip time out of the way. Too easy. That That's a real easy one. If you have a grounding out switch, literally just take these off and it, it will not stop when you get up off the seat. Now, since mine is one where it completes the circuit, disconnecting it won't do anything. It'll still act the exact same way. So what you need to do is you need to uh, basically connect these two wires together. If you chose to make a more permanent solution, basically what you could do is cut these two wires, strip them back, and you could connect them directly to each other. The way, the way that I've done it is make a little jumper. Let me get these dikes out of my hand. So I've made a little jumper out of wire and a little spade connector. And basically I've made this so that these can connect into the other ones and make for a temporary solution. Now what this allows me to do is uh, run the mower exactly, you know, exactly how I want to, but I haven't cut the factory wires. So when I take it into the dealer or something like that to get it serviced or, or whatever, um, if there's a warranty issue, then I just simply put them back on here and boom, I don't have to worry about them telling me that they can't work on my mower because I avoided my warranty, blah, 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 blah. So too easy. Just remember, if you take these completely off and it acts how you want it to, then boom, too easy, zip time out of the way. If it still acts the same way, then you need to put a jumper in here. Now keep in mind that some mowers will route 12 volts DC through these. Um, so. Uh, keep them keep them uh, wrapped or otherwise um, uh, not bare metal anywhere. So just in case they do run 12 volts DC, you're not shorting out to anything. But that's literally how you bypass a seat switch on literally anything, a tractor, a mower, a zero turn. Um, they all have the same kind of pressure switch 
that just might be two different functions on, on how it works. One would ground out and one would complete a circuit. Mine completes a circuit, so you have to complete that circuit. Okay, so this is how I've rigged up my wires. All I did was loop the loop around, put a zip tie around the, around the wires to hold it in place so it won't go anywhere. All right guys, I hope you liked my down and dirty video on how to do that, uh, that seat delete switch. Uh, or delete the seat switch uh, video. Uh, if you like it, go ahead and hit subscribe. Um, I'm doing all kinds of little stuff here and there um, on things that I think could be useful um, and just learn about. I didn't really go into detail on this video because I don't know how much uh, people like to see the actual nitty gritty detail. Um, I could have drawn out a diagram and shown you exactly how it works. Um, but I chose not to do it on this video. If you'd like to see that, please comment below and say, I'd like you to go into more detail on how that circuit works and so I can understand that a little bit better. Uh, I, I think I explained it good enough, but uh, if you think it needs more, if you think I should uh, be a little bit more detailed, then please put it in the comments because I need a lot of feedback from you guys to see what you guys wanna see. Uh, so that's all for now. I guess I don't have anything other, anything else to talk about. I'm just bumping my gums at this point. So I'll see you guys next video and uh, hope to see you around the channel.